Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to cut out a subject from a background in Adobe Photoshop. So you can see here on screen an example of what we're going to be creating. We have a number of different layers. We have our background color. We have a slight vignette here in the form of a hue and saturation layer. And we have our subject with a layer mask. So this is what the original image looks like. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to add your own subject onto a background where you can adjust the color to something of your liking. So you can pick any color you like. So pretty cool. Right, let's jump over to the image that we've opened in Photoshop. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to make a selection. Now there's a number of different ways we can do this. If your background is more complicated, I'd recommend using something like the pen tool. But for this tutorial, we've got a pretty easy background to cut out. So we can either use the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool. So the magic wand tool, you just select that, left click, hold shift to add to the selection or hold alt to subtract from the selection. And we can just keep clicking until we've selected all of the background and you can adjust the tolerance here. So the higher the tolerance, the more of the background or image will be captured. We can also do the quick selection tool. We can simply just left click and drag and it does a pretty good job of creating that selection because our background is a pretty straightforward one. There's a few different graduations in there, different tones, but Photoshop's pretty smart in distinguishing that all as the background. And again, you can hold Alt and you can deselect from that selection if you like. So once you've made that selection, the next step is to go to Select and go Inverse. And what this will do is it will take that background selection and flip it around the other way. So now our subject becomes the selected area. Now with this selected, we can go to select and down to select and mask. Now, if you're on an older version of Photoshop, this might be recalled refine edges and it will bring up something similar to this here. Now we're going to want to use the refine edges tool. That's the second one down on the left here. And you can use this view option here to adjust the different backgrounds so you can preview how it's going to look. So we have onion skin here. Lots of different backgrounds you can preview on. So we're going to preview on black for this tutorial, but you can preview on any of those, whichever is your preference. So if we zoom in, well, we can see that the quick selection tools done a pretty good job of making that selection. We've got a few bits of fringing here. Fringing is where you get this kind of white edge around the edge. So not a bad job. Depending on the image that you're cutting out, you might get uh, a better result than that, or it might be slightly worse and you have might have a bit more fringing. So that kind of white line around the edge. This, this one's done a pretty good job actually. So depending on whether yours is bad, whether it's good, what we're going to do is use the refine edge tool to tidy this up. So what we do is with the refine edge tool selected, you can use the left and right square brackets on your keyboard to increase or decrease the size of your brush. And we're just going to left click on our subject and then drag out to the edge and then run along the edge. And what it does is you'll see it cleans up that selection. So again, we click on the subject, drag out to the edge and then just run around the edge. So this bit's not too bad here. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. Let's find a bit that's not as clean. So something like this. So I'm left clicking on the subject and then just dragging out and running along the edge. And you can see it kind of helps remove that highlight, that fringing from around the edge. And the ear has gone a little bit funny here. So let's just sample the ear and run along that edge. Now it's not done the best job there. We can undo by going to edit, undo or redo here and just bring that brush size down. Okay, so it's kind of smoothed the ear a little bit, but we've got this uh, these kind of artifacts appearing here, but that doesn't matter. We can fix that in a moment. This part is really about defining that edge. So we've got uh, a bit more kind of fringing here on the hair. So we'll left click and just drag along and you can see this is how it was and this is how it is now. So it's not perfect, but it is removing these highlights 
And bear in mind that I'm doing this pretty quickly, so you can spend a lot longer to get a much better result than this. But this is just a pretty quick way of doing it. And as I say, if you do have a lot more uh, of these kind of highlights around the edge in your image, you will be amazed when you watch them disappear using this technique. So we're just gonna go over here. Now we're gonna zoom in on the, the cheek here. So we'll just sample that skin, drag out, and you can see it smooths that really nicely. Now, because we are going to be working with a layer mask, everything is non-destructive. So if it does accidentally select something by mistake, then we can always go up here, go edit, undo, or step backwards, or we can just brush it in or out of the mask after we've finished this step. So we're just going around here and we can go around these and we can adjust the brush size and we could take a little bit more care. But because this is just a tutorial, I'm just going to there we go, it didn't quite work then. So you just have to go edit, undo. But because this is a tutorial, I'm just showing you the technique and then you can take this technique and apply it to your own images. Okay, so let's just finish up this last bit really quickly. So remember, I'm just clicking on the subject and then just dragging straight out to the edge and running along the outside lines. Okay, nearly done. So you can see that does make a difference and it helps kind of, does exactly what it says, refine that edge. And we can zoom out and that's that's not a bad job we've done there. Now there's something else that we can do to refine this even further. We have a little bit of this highlight still around the hair. And what we can actually do is we have a number of different options here. We're going to look at the shift edge. Now what you can do is you can add to this or subtract from it. We're going to subtract from it and effectively this is going to contract the selection, so bring it in slightly. So if we go from 0 to minus 20%, you'll see it kind of darkens and removes these highlights and we can go even more. So let's go for minus 30 and maybe we'll just try minus 40 just to see how it looks. And there we go, those highlights around the hair are completely gone. Now one thing to bear in mind is that when you start shifting the edge, you will kind of get these artifacts creeping in in places, but that's okay. We can go and clean that up in a moment. So when you're happy, just click OK, and it will make this selection. Now this is just a selection. We haven't actually done anything to our image yet, but before we can mask this, we will need to just double click this layer and we'll call this subject and click OK. And then from the bottom of the layers panel, just click the add layer mask icon and it will then mask out our subject onto a transparent background. So next we're going to select the adjustments icon at the bottom and add a solid color. Now for me personally, I like to pick a really bright contrasting color just so I can check my cutout. So I'm going to drag this layer underneath the subject and I can now zoom in and see how this looks. So there's a few places here where it kind of masked a little bit too much or didn't do such a good job, but we can select the mask and select the brush tool and just pick one of Photoshop's default feathered brushes. And if it's taken too much image away, just select white as your foreground color and just brush in white into that mask. And you'll see there, it really does clean that up quite nicely and we could do a bit of work around the ear here. So same principle using the left and right square brackets you can quickly adjust the size of your brush. So I'm just kind of brushing around that ear. I mean I could even cut that out with a pencil. So the select a mask feature is great just for making that initial selection and doing most of the work and then for me personally I like to just do any last little bits just like this manually. So you can see here, I'm just going around, zoomed in really, really far. And just going and filling in these gaps just to kind of get that cut out looking as perfect as possible. Now you can see here, it did quite a bad job. Well, I did quite a bad job. Let's not blame the computer, Dan. Let's take responsibility for your terrible cutting out skills. 
So that's why it's definitely worth taking a little bit more time and care when doing your cutouts. But as I say, it's all non-destructive. It's all on a layer mask here, so it doesn't matter. We can always go and correct this afterwards. But the selector mask feature did the majority of the work and it did a pretty good job as well. So a little bit of cheek here. So I'm just brushing in white onto the layer mask. And I could take a little bit more care down here on this side of the face. And for anyone that's interested, I'm using a Wacom graphics tablet. It's the Wacom Intuos Pro and it's linked in the description. And it makes retouching and cutting out like this uh, considerably easier just because you control things like pen pressure as well. And you can see here, part of the necklace has also been removed. I've got some of those yellows coming through. So we're just gonna brush that back in. A little bit on the collar quite a lot here on the shoulder. I'm going to try and quickly speed through this just so we can get on to the last step, which is adding that vignette and just finishing up our cutout. Okay, so we've done a pretty good job. We can double click this adjustment layer now and we can change the fill to anything we want and we can even go darker. So for this tutorial, I'm going to go with 0D, 0D15. And you can also sample a color from the image if you want. Okay, so there we go. We've got a nice dark background and we've removed a lot of the fringing from around the edge. Those highlights are now a lot less visible. The last thing we're going to do is go to the adjustments icon in the bottom corner and add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And if we just bump up the saturation to 10, and the lightness will change to five. So it just lightens up that background, but we're going to select the gradient tool and just pick the default black to white gradient and make sure that radial gradient as the second one in is selected and just click on the layer mask if it's not already selected. And with the gradient tool, just click in the center and drag out to the edge. Now, if I just adjust the lightness, you can see the effect that we just created. Now, if it does it the other way around and you have the dark area in the center, just click the reverse icon up the top. So the idea is to have the lighter area in the center and a little bit darker towards the edges. Now, this is a very pronounced vignette. So I'm just gonna go back and set this to five because I want this to be really subtle. So that's how it looks off and this is how it looks on. But the good thing about this is we've now created a vignette with a lighter center and darker edges and I can adjust the color from the color picker and it keeps that vignette across any color that I select. And there we go. That's how to cut out a subject from a background in Adobe Photoshop. Guys, if you'd like to become a patron of the channel and get access to the private live streams, free downloads behind the scenes or chat with me directly, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. Oh.